Hello everyone and welcome back to the video series on a sprite for beginners. This is part 3 and in this video I am going to be going over the toolbar, how to use the tools and some tips and tricks. Let's start off with the marquee tool right at the very top. This is a familiar tool, everyone should know about it. It's the basic selection tool that allows you to transform and rotate but there are still some tips I can give you in a sprite. Tip number one, if you make a selection and it's not quite as precise as you wanted it to be, instead of releasing the selection and doing it all again, you can hold down spacebar to reposition your selection to how you wanted it. This is also very good for getting a precise selection. In the tools options along the top, you can see that you have replace selection, which is default. You have add to selection and subtract from selection. Now they are pretty self-explanatory, but instead of having to use these directly, there are shortcuts. To subtract from a selection, you simply hold down the right mouse button and drag. To add to a selection, you use the shift modifier key. Hold down shift, click and drag. Next up is the pencil tool. I prefer to call this the brush tool, which makes sense as the shortcut is B. So this is your basic brush tool. The only option I need to go over here really right now is pixel perfect. If you turn on pixel perfect and I draw the same pattern, you can tell the difference how the pixel perfect pattern is much smoother. You won't have to go back and clean up any jagged lines and this comes in very handy if you're using a pen and a pad rather than a mouse. But honestly for small scale stuff I prefer to use a mouse. It's very rare in pixel art that I'll pick up the pen, only if I'm doing something very big. We also have the symmetry tool, the horizontal symmetry and the vertical symmetry which basically just mirrors what you do. Next up is the eraser tool, which we all know and understand. Simply erases what you have. Now don't worry too much about shortcut keys right now, as I'll be going over them in another tutorial. I don't want to throw too much information at you straight away. After the eraser tool, we have the eyedropper tool. Now the eyedropper tool will pick out the colour that you click on. In this case, I only have grey on the background. But to show you an example, I'm going to put one more colour down using the brush tool with the shortcut B. I'm going to put an orange down and fill that in. I'll go and take the eyedropper tool. And if you watch in the bottom left corner where my foreground colour is, my primary left click colour. When I click on the background here, I will get the grey colour. When I click on the orange colour, I will get the orange colour. Now a shortcut to this. Let's say I am using the brush tool. I hit B, I have my brush tool. I am currently painting in a green. If I want to fill that with orange, instead of going all the way over to the toolbar, I can hold down the Alt key, which will bring up the eyedropper tool. While I have the Alt key held down, I click on the orange, I let go of the Alt key, and now I can simply fill in the circle. So to recap real fast, hold down the Alt key for the eyedropper tool. Next up, we have the magnifying glass, the zoom tool, Z. Now, it's unlikely you're ever going to use this tool because you can simply scroll in and out with the mouse wheel. Along with the magnifying glass or the zoom tool, you have the hand tool. The hand tool allows you to move the canvas around. Again, it's unlikely that you're ever going to use this tool either as you can just hold the mouse wheel down to do the same thing. So that is scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out and hold the mouse wheel down to move your canvas. Next we have the move tool. Now the move tool is fairly important. With your move tool selected, it will move everything on the current frame of the current layer when you click and drag. Now I mentioned current frame because it will only move that single frame. However, this is where I believe it becomes important. Let me show you by adding a new frame. So now we have two frames down the bottom. I am on layer 2, but it is not selected. I am now going to use the move tool to move everything in this frame left a little bit. If I go back to frame 1 now, both frames will be different. Now I am going to undo this with Ctrl Z. Both frames are now the same. I'm going to go back to frame 1 and explain why I think this is important. Sometimes we have an animation spanning over many frames and we want to move that whole animation. Now we can't simply use the marquee tool because we would have to do it frame by frame. If we use the move tool we can select the layer. It's important that you remember that if you don't select the layer you're just going to move a single frame similar to the marquee tool. But if you select the layer and it has the yellow box around it showing you that it's selected. 
You can then move the whole layer, including every single frame. So now when I click and drag and move, it will be the same on both frames. Next up, we have the fill tool, the paint bucket. Now for most of us, this is a tool we all grew up with. We simply fill in areas nice and easily with any selected color we like. But instead of choosing areas individually, sometimes we want to replace all the areas with the same color. For example, if I take green and I fill in this area, this area does not fill in. Sometimes we want that effect, but other times we want both areas to be filled in, especially when it's spanning across a massive image and we want to alter some colors to see how it looks. Now to do this, select our color, and while we have the paint bucket tool, uncheck continuous at the top in the settings. When this is unchecked, it will change every single area of similar color. So when I paint over this green color now, all the other green colors would change color, like so. Next up, we have the line tool. Now for those that are familiar with a sprite, you will probably know that we can just simply take the brush tool, select a color, and when we click on the canvas and create a single pixel, if we all shift down, it will create a line between that pixel or the last place you clicked and the cursor. So what is the difference? With the line tool, you also click and drag and it creates the same effect. So why do we need it? If you use transparency, which I'm going to set now on the color, take the brush tool and we put our pixel down, Alt Shift and click. Now you may notice that the first pixel is not the same shade. That is because when you put the pixel down and then hit shift, it puts another pixel on top of it. This can get quite annoying, especially when you're doing multiple lines and you've got one pixel at every corner that is a different shade. Now if you use the line tool, you won't have this problem. Along with the line tool, you also get the curve tool. I'm going to put the transparency back up just to show you the curve tool. Now it is the same thing, you click and drag. And then you can bend the tool when you let go of the mouse button, you get two curves with this. Your first curve, which is your first click, and your second curve, which is your second click. And as you may have guessed, this can be very useful. Next up, we have the rectangular tool, which draws a box. Now, like the marquee tool, if your position is wrong, you can hold spacebar down and move the rectangle to correct the position. You can also hold shift down, which will keep the aspect ratio to 1 1, creating a perfect square. If instead of creating the square from a corner, you want to create it from the center, simply click. Hold down control and drag. Now your square will be created from the center. If you let go of control, it will go back to the corner mode. Press control again, it will go back to the center. Everything else that I have said also applies. You can hold control with shift to keep it at a perfect square. You can hold the space bar as well to move it. The last option with the rectangular tool is to rotate. To rotate, you hold down the alt key. This will give you the option to rotate. The other options have similar shortcuts. The rectangle fill tool, the ellipse tool and the ellipse fill tool. Next up is the polygon tool. You simply click the mouse button and drag. Once you have done that you can let go of the mouse button and move it to a position you want. Once you find that position, click and drag a little bit again and you can let go of the mouse button again to drag away to find another point. When you have done finding all your points, just click without dragging and it will fill up the polygon. If you at first click without dragging, you will just create a dot. You must first click and drag a little bit, then you can let go of the mouse button, put it at a position you want, click, drag a little bit, select another position, click, drag a little bit, select another position, and this time I won't drag because I want to finish the polygon, I will just click and it is done. The same goes for the contour tool, however this time you continuously drag. 
to draw whatever shape you fancy. And when you let go, it will fill in the areas. So the last two tools I am going to go over in another tutorial. I will show you them real fast right now, but in another tutorial I'm going to go over some of the tools that I have missed out. First off, the blur tool. It simply blurs the edges of your image, fading the line between two colours. Next up, we have the jumble tool, which jumbles the pixels randomly, scattering them on the canvas. Now there are some really cool stuff you can do with these tools, which is why I'm going to leave them for another tutorial later on, as they can take quite a bit of time to explain. A couple of other tools I have missed I will also go over real fast. The spray tool, which at first is just that, a spray tool, but it has many fascinating options, and you can do some really good stuff with it. I even did a stream of me painting an oil image just using the spray tool. We also have the gradient fill tool, which just creates a gradient between two colours. Again, it can get a lot more advanced than this. You can use different techniques and many other things that I will show you in a later tutorial that will be dedicated to each of these tools, showing you how to get the best out of them. It will be the same tutorial where I go over many of the settings on the above bar. Thank you again for watching. I hope this has given you a bit more insight into Airsprite and be sure to check back next week for the next tutorial. There are many many more to come. I'm going to be diving as deep as I can into Airsprite, taking you from these beginner tutorials to some very advanced stuff. I hope you all have a great week.